In this talk, I would like to highlight how we set up those keys using Chainlink DKG and how we can securely manage them over the lifetime of a system with Chainlink secrets management. I will start off with briefly explaining to you the problem of centralized key management, then motivating, um, with that motivating why we built Chainlink DKG and the system. Then I give you a, a, a brief introduction in how it actually works. And I will finish up with a few use cases that Chainlink DKG and secret management enables. So let's start off with um, centralized key control, the potential pitfalls that can arrive here. Um, there are many issues when a single entity controls cryptographic keys. For example, we can have software bugs exploited by uh, malicious um, hackers, for example, which can then use um, those vulnerabilities to extract secrets and access data that they should not be able to access. Um, but there could be very different threats, insider threats, which use their credentials in order to access systems which you're not supposed to access. Those are security problems. But on the other hand, we can also have so-called liveness problems. What happens when a device which stores a key is broken, right? In the best case, we just have a short downtime. In the worst case, we permanently lose access to our encrypted data. So we want to protect against key loss. And one more thing, which is typically not mentioned, is what I called here on the slide a malicious locksmith. So when you think about physical keys, somebody actually makes those physical keys. And those parties that make the physical keys, the locksmith, are in fact trusted parties in the overall system. They can make a duplicate when they give you the key, before they give you the key. Um, they could even make a key that doesn't work. For some applications, you notice on first use. For other applications, for example, a long-term backup, that might be a critical flaw in the system. So by decentralizing the management and control of keys, we tend to avoid all of those problems. So let me um, zoom in on the title of this talk again. Keys no one holds. What do I mean by no one here? By no one, I want to emphasize um, that no single entity should control the key. Rather, as depicted in this picture, the control over cryptographic keys is safeguarded by a system, a network of nodes, here depicted as a chain link um, decentralized Oracle network, a DOM. And by using a decentralized way to control and manage keys, we avoid the single points of failure associated with unauthorized access, um, as well as key loss, for example. So what we also gain by using decentralized access to keys is we can flexibly control how and when we want to access our systems. We follow a quite traditional um, so-called threshold cryptographic security model where um, there is a number of parties in the system, say 50 chain link Oracle nodes, which safeguard a key together. And out of those 50 nodes in this example, 30 nodes may be required to jointly perform some operation in order for it to work. But the other 20 nodes may be offline, may be slow, may be crashed, may do arbitrary things to try to prevent the system from doing progress, the system will still work. So there's this configurable threshold between how many nodes we want to um, be required to perform a certain operations and how many nodes we consider to be, uh, which may be offline or doing all kinds of other things, not participating in the system. But overall, it still works. So this brings us to the point on how we set up those keys in the first place. So we built Chainlink DKG, but the topic of um, distributed key generation is actually a long-standing academic research field. It was the, the origins of it go back to the 1970s uh, with papers by Shamir or Peterson, many, many other works um, who kind of built the academic foundation with, which, which we built on top of. And I even myself personally worked on academic side of this problem back on the work doing my dissertation. 
there I worked on a distributed key generation protocol for the Ethereum blockchain, the ETHKG back then. And so I'm really happy to be part of the Chainlink team now to work on a real-life production system like Chainlink DKG. So here I want to also highlight that going from an academic research cryptographic scheme to a production system which kind of manages all of our real-world needs of an evolving system over time is a hard topic. So I'm going to give you in a, few, in a few slides, I'll give you a bit of an idea of how we can manage to do this to ensure that our system is implemented correctly and securely. In regards to um, our system being flexible to changing circumstances, what you want to implement is a system which can grow as security demands increase. So we can start with a smaller set of participants that over time um, add more participants as the security needs of the system increases. Let me he highlight here how the Chainlink DKG fits into the larger Chainlink confidential computing stack. So Chainlink, um, the Chainlink DKG protocol, as well as confidential workflow execution and confidential, con confidential connectivity, are the kind of three cornerstones of the overall system. With the Chainlink DKG protocol use, being used to set up the keys, which are, for example, long-term stored um, in the Chainlink Vault DOM. Um, and whereas traditionally we manage our systems on-chain, smart contracts on a traditional blockchain, the Chainlink um, confidential computing environment now allows us to connect the on-chain world with private confidential data on the off-chain side. And all of that is powered by, by chaining the key on the most uh, basic level to set up and create the keys. So how do we how do we actually implement the chaining the key protocol in a secure way? So for this, we have heard in a previous talk, um, we used the Oracle consensus protocol, Chainlink OCR. Um, we leverage a few advancements in the new 3.1 version, which allows us to abstract the communication pattern of the protocol. So whenever within our DKG protocol, shares are exchanged between different parties, we don't need to worry about how the communication works. All of that is handled underneath um, by the OCR battle-tested protocol foundation. The advancements allow us to run a DKG protocol with very low latency and without having to worry about large amounts of participants um, within the DKG. Just runs in a few seconds. A key concept we followed when we designed the Chainlink DKG protocol is the so-called dealer and recipient separation. So there's a bunch of nodes which are generating the keys in the first place. Then, when this process is finished, they form a so-called result package, the output of the DKG protocol. And this result package is then handed over to the recipients of the DKG protocol. The dealers and the recipients may be the same parties, they may be different parties, um, doesn't really matter. And what this enables is a great deal of flexibility in the protocol. The same kind of approach can be used for the recipients to share the keys again for another set of recipients. It can be used to share the key as a backup to offline devices, which are not even a part of the internet or they're connected to the rest of the system. So highly secure backups that can be made using this flexible approach. Let me highlight a few key properties here again. So the dealers, when they receive this package, this result package, can actually non-interactively verify that the keys have been set up correctly. But not only the, the recipients can perform this verification, but in fact an auditor or any third party with access to the result package can do so. I already mentioned flexibility, don't want to do it again here, but one more property I want to highlight here is the unbiasability of the keys we produce. So when we centrally generate a key, what is typically required is that we sample a key uniformly at random from a set of keys, which means we pick one key and every key is equally likely to be picked. Um, when we do the same thing in a distributed setting, well, we need to ensure that the same kind of distribution of the keys applies also in the distributed setting. And this is crucial because that allows us to leverage the existing security proofs for all of the centralized key systems to still apply 
and therefore also work with a distributedly generated key. And our, our protocol supports this. Here, now I give you a, a brief glimpse in how it technically works. It's going to be very high level. I'm not going to put any formulas on the slide, so bear with me. Here in this, in this example, we have set up a very simple scenario with just three nodes, Alice, Bob, and Charlie. Each of those nodes in the first kind of step of the key generation protocol sets up their individual key. So here in this slide, we have Alice setting up an orange key. And then Alice shares his or the, his, her orange key with all the other parties, here Bob and Charlie. This is actually done using a technique called verifiable um, secret sharing, verifiably encrypted secret sharing, and multi-recipient encryption. Alongside those shares that are transmitted to Bob and Alice, also a zero knowledge proof is added, which Bob and Charlie can verify to ensure that the shares that they actually received, those orange pieces on the slide, actually can be uh, combined again to get Alice's key if there is a need for that. But not only Alice does this process, but actually Bob and Charlie do the same thing in parallel. So Bob shares a green key to Alice and, uh, and Charlie, and Charlie shares a blue key with Alice and Bob. And all of that, in the end, leads us to a situation where each of the parties has parts of the keys of all other parties. And then there is a bunch of cryptographic techniques involved which combine all of those shares to the result package we have seen previously. And then the result package is sent over to the recipients, and the key can be used. And all of that is powering, in the end, what we announced at the SmartCon this year, Chainlink Confidential Compute. I don't have much time to go into all of the use cases enabled by it, but I briefly want to highlight two use cases here. So the first is confidential data distribution. So when a data provider wants to share a piece of information securely with a number of customers, in a reliable and secure way, he can do this using a Chainlink runtime environment workflow. Um, for this purpose, the data is initially encrypted to a key which was generated by the distributed key generation protocol. And then the customer provides another key. And the Chainlink workflow then does a re-encryption from the distributed key generation result key to the customer's key. And only the customer can then um, access the information provided. Only the particular customer we did the re-encryption to. And the whole process can, can be augmented by using a public contract, a public uh, smart contract, where you, for example, can uh, put an audit trail of who accessed which data, which data was provided um, in any, any form you would like. The second use case I want to highlight here um, is more related maybe to legacy systems. So legacy systems might not support all of the threshold cryptography we built here. But still, the distributed key generation protocol and the secret management implemented with the vault on can help to improve the security of those systems. What we can do is securely store, for example, an API credential here for this xyz.com website, encrypt this API key to the vault on, which internally has a shared key, set up with the DKG protocol, and then only use, recover the key inside of a trusted execution environment, therefore limiting any kind of blast radius from potential leakage to within um, this very secured and isolated environment where the key is then, for example, used to access the API provided by this website. And with that, I'm already finished with the main part of the presentation. I would like to give a shout out to all the amazing folks at Chainlink Labs who worked with me on this project. Um, and I want to finish with a, um, a cool sentence, I don't know. <laughs> um, let's, let's build together um, by following the principle of keys no one holds so that we can all build systems um, which everyone can trust. Thank you.